हेलो एंड वेलकम टू द कोर्स ऑफ मेटीरियल साइंस एंड मैन्युफैक्चरिंग प्रोसेस सो इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी हैव सीन द कास्टिंग एंड इक्विपमेंट इन दैट कास्टिंग एंड इक्विपमेंट लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट डाई कास्टिंग प्रेशर डाई कास्टिंग एट्सेट्रा नाउ हेयर इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट वन लेफ्ट ओवर टॉपिक दैट इज सेंट्रीफ्यूगल कास्टिंग and after that centrifugal casting we will be discussing about casting defects so these two th things this centrifugal casting and casting defects these two things uh, the after uh, the completion of these two things uh, your casting uh, subject will be completed and uh, and uh, after the casting will be over we will be Uh, uh, starting a new uh, new manufacturing process that is machining so uh, right now let's uh, uh, start our lecture with this uh, with lecture objective so the lecture objective for this uh, lecture is to learn about the uh, to um, pre present the principle of different centrifugal casting processes so we will know about different centrifugal processes that means what are the centrifugal casting processes uh, that are used in the industry uh, and how this process works the, this we will be discussing next uh, we will know about the casting defect what are the uh, types of the casting defects and uh, what are the reasons for those casting defects that we will know and another thing we have to know uh, while uh, studying the cast uh, before the study of the casting defect that is your uh, uh, that is your casting inspection cleaning inspection and cleaning so that inspection and cleaning part is mainly uh, uh, mainly done by mainly done by machining so wh what we have do we have to do after the after the after taking out the casting from the mold cavity that solidified casting may have some extra parts such as that gating system that material on the gating system will be solidified with the casting so there is some excess part those excess part should be machined and the uh, allowance should be machined so that we can get uh, our desired shape so that is for our Uh, clear cleaning part and after the cleaning we will check for, uh, check if there is any impurity if there is any defect or not so uh, this checking this checking of defect uh, uh, checking of if there is any defect or not this checking is known as inspection so for doing uh, cleaning and inspection or for inspection of the casting what is necessary the knowledge of casting defect is very necessary so in this lecture we are uh, considering uh, we will be uh, seeing about centrifugal casting first after this important knowledge of casting defects so what defects are possible so that these things we should know so that we can very easily inspect the casting and the inspection process of the casting is mainly by uh, by eye observation and uh, some destructive and non destructive test can be done to know about the casting uh, uh, for casting inspection for example the inspection of uh, of some uh, you will see some blow hole blow hole or gas por porosity this type of thing we can see by open uh, air or by naked eye so um, so by naked eye uh, we can see about the casting those casting defects so this uh, critical inspection is very important for casting so let's start so what is centrifugal casting so the centrifugal casting process is this centrifugal casting process utilizes the inertial force uh, that is caused by the rotation to distribution 
of the molten to distribute the molten metal into the mold cavity so when the mold uh, when the molten metal will be distributed into the mold cavity by using centrifugal inertial force uh, uh, or inertial force that is caused by the rotation so whenever the force is uh, whenever the metal molten metal is poured or molten metal is um, poured into the distributed into the mold cavity by using inertial force of rotation that that time what we say centrifugal casting process occurs and then there are three type of the centrifugal castings first the true centrifugal casting in that hollow cylindrical part such as pipe gun barrels bushing engine cylinder liner bearing rings with or without flanges street lamp post so these are the these are the typical parts those can be made by cent true centrifugal casting so in this true centrifugal casting what happen hollow cylindrical part hollow cylindrical part can be made in this true centrifugal casting what we do we just put the molten material at the center from the center and a rotating bar a rotating uh, wheel is there and by rotation of that rotating wheel what happen the uh, material the molten material will move towards the uh, the molten material will move towards your um, end of the cast, uh, uh, towards the outer periphery of that uh, of that uh, um, uh, wheel and the uh, uh, hollow pipe hollow cylinder such things can be made so this is true centrifugal casting next is semi centrifugal casting in this semi centrifugal casting this casting process is used to cut uh, cast part with rotational symmetry so whenever a part has rotational symmetry at that time what happened at that time we can use the semi centrifugal casting so rotational symmetry part with rotational symmetry that means uh, for example sprocket wheel or uh, wheels with spokes those, those wheels has rotational symmetry and th that rotational symmetry can be achieved by the centrifugal force Uh, and uh, b b b or by rotation force so whenever uh, this type of uh, casting is made at that time it is called semi centrifugal casting next process is centrifuging so in case of centrifuging any shape can be shape can be cast but the material or the um, pouring of the material is done by centrifuge uh, centrifugal force so in case of centrifuging what happen the mold cavities are fixed with the uh, with the outer periphery outer uh, circle outer circle or outer ring of the rotating wheel and the molten metal is poured at, at the center and by using the centrifugal force or the inertial force of rotation that uh, heavy molten metals are poured into the mold cavities so this process is known as centrifuging so one by one we will see about all these three process so first here see this is your centrifugal casting process or true centrifugal casting so in this process what happen the molten material is poured into the rotating mold the rotating mold at the uh, and the axis of the rotation is usually horizontal but for short work piece we can mainly we can use the uh, vertical uh, we can uh, we can uh, use the axis vertical axis of rotation also so molds here in in this case the molds are mainly made of steel iron graphite and this molds can be coated with the refractory lining refractory lining means a uh, lining of the uh, high temperature resistant material should be uh, is given means not high temperature resistant but uh, the uh, that lining will not change or decay or uh, its strength on be changed with the interaction of high heat so The refractory molding is there to increase the mold life. So life of the mold. That means uh, mold life means how many number of casting can be done by using a single mold. That is known as mold life. So uh, to increase the mold life, this refractory lining is given. 
to the mold uh, to the mold see here uh, the drive rollers and free roller that is your idler roll so drive rollers rotate the mold and if we if we enter if we give the if we give the um, see here in this figure so this drive zaps and this is uh, uh, your uh, this is your um, uh, uh, idler roller and this is mold so a continuous rotation continuous rotation in which direction in this direction see if this uh, drive sa drive shaft is rotating in this direction that means thi this part this your uh, mold your mold is rotating in opposite direction and this rotation is supported by your uh, your two rollers see uh, these two first one is your drive roller and second one is your free roller and by this rotation when the molten metal is poured by the centrifugal uh, action by the centrifugal action or the rotational inertia the molten metal heavier molten metal will uh, try to go to the outer surface and the low density slag will be interrupted or low density slag will be in the inner side or the in the center side so we can very easily chip out the uh, slag material so that we can get complete casting complete uh, casting of our desired shape so that is your centrifugal true centrifugal casting for semi centrifugal casting see here uh, the mold in the mold for semi centrifugal casting in the mold uh, uh, every uh, each and every side uh, the molten the mold will be made of your uh, material with uh, rotational symmetry and the molten metal is poured at the center and it is uh, pushed into the a mold cavity by using your uh, by using centrifugal force this is called semi centrifugal casting now for uh, this is semi centrifugal casting so this process is semi centrifugal casting this is semi centrifugal casting uh, here uh, this is called semi centrifugal casting and in case of semi centrifugal casting a revolving table is used but in case of mold uh, in case of centrifuging this figure b is uh, centrifuging in uh, this centrifuging any type of shape can be made and the molten metal is poured into the work, uh, into the molten mold cavity by using centrifugal force so that is what uh, semi centrifugal casting uh, centrifuging is so now we will see about casting defect so there are first type of the casting defect that is metallic projection so that means uh, uh, the defect which consists fins flash or projection such as swells uh, and rough surface so this type of the projections and rough surface can very easily seen in case of casting because in case of casting that casting is done in a sand mold so due to that sand permeability or in the mold well, well due to mold well, uh, mold wall breakage uh, or uh, any other reason or any other reason what happened the metallic projection can be seen in in the surface of the casting and that is known as metallic projection defect next is cavities cavities means uh, that cavities consist rounded or rough internal or exposed uh, uh, exposed depression including blow hole pin hole and sinkage cavity so uh, these are the type of the cavities blow hole pin holes and sinkage cavity blow hole blow hole mainly done by whenever a gas is entrapped in casting so what happened whenever a gas is entrapped in the uh, surface of the casting at that time what happened uh, the gas is entrapped but when the material is solidified at that time that that ga gas may want to uh, may leave and at that time what happened a hole can be generated at the place where the gas is there so that is known as blow hole
pin holes means due to sand uh, sand inclusion or due to sand entrapsion uh, some hole can be occurred in the casting surface that is called pin hole and sinkage cavity so as we know whenever the molten metal solidifies at that time the volume of that molten metal will be reduced as the volume of the molten metal is reduced at that time what happened some cavity or some depression in the uh, casting or in the casting surface may be seen that is known as sinkage cavity so these all are the type of the cavities and this type of the cavities may form due to improper uh, operation improper process parameters or improper operator skills next is discontinuities discontinuities such as cracks uh, cold or hot tearing cold shut uh, these are the type of the discontinuities if the solidifying materials that are constrained from sinkage freely uh, from sinkage uh, freely that uh, uh, cracking and tearing may occur and although there is several factors those are involved in tearing coarse uh, uh, coarse grain size and the presence of low melting point se segregates uh, along the grain boundaries that means intergranular uh, uh, that increase the tendency for hot tearing and cold shut what is cold shut cold shut is an interface in casting that lacks uh, complete fusion because of the melting of two stream because of meeting of two stream of liquid metal from different gate so uh, in case of cold shot due to low fluidity the uh, material uh, flow or the flow of molten metal will be stopped uh, very far before uh, the complete filling of the mold cavity and the ga gates uh, and the um, uh, getting system so uh, these are your uh, discontinuities next the defect there is that is defective surface so defective surface what is defective surface defective surface are uh, surface fold laps scars adhering sand layers and oxide scales these are your defective surface and this defective surface may hold uh, the, this defective surface uh, may be occur due to improper uh, operator skill so now these are uh, another type of the uh, casting defect is in incomplete casting so incomplete casting such as misrun misrun why they occur misrun occur due to premature solidification next insufficient volume of the material metal poured and run out uh, uh, this is also another reason for misrun insufficient volume of the material poured next run out run out is mainly due to loss of metal uh, from the mold after for pouring so if there is a loss of metal from the mold after pouring uh, then run out will occur and in so uh, these two are type of incomplete casting and incomplete casting can also result from the molten metal uh, being at too low temperature or uh, from the pouring of the material too slowly so if the pouring is too slow at that time the ca casting or the mold cavity won't be fulfilled before that the um, uh, the molten metal will be solidified so that's uh, that all these things we have to take care of while we are doing casting so next is incorrect dimension or shape so uh, due to factors such as uh, improper sinkage allowance pattern mounting error irregular contraction deformed pattern and wrapped casting and misalignment these are your incorrect dimension so the these defects are due to the uh, improper dimensioning 
and inclusion these are uh, this inclusion which uh, may be formed during melting solidification and molding these uh, so these inclusions are generally non metallic that means the some non metallic element may entrapped into the Uh, casting and uh, they can be uh, regarded they are regarded as harmful because they act as a stress concentration area or stress riser and thus uh, this uh, chance of this uh, thus uh, as it uh, as they act as a stress concentration area they creates Uh, they uh, reduce the strength of the casting and this inclusion may be uh, may form during melting when the molten metal react with environment such as oxygen or with the crucible uh, or mold material so everything can be possible so in case of inclusion the chance of uh, the, the uh, we have to check very carefully for uh, inclusion so these are some of your casting uh, casting defects see blow holes uh, uh, surface uh, blow holes scars blister scab uh, uh, your uh, um, wash misran and coal shirt both the, all the casting defects has been shown here in this figure the uh, uh, give attention and uh, uh, try to draw this figure because this type of the figure or this type of the question may come into your uh, may come uh, in your semester that write down about casting defect at that time you have to write down all those casting defect and along with this figure uh, you have to do all this so thank you hope you I hope you enjoy this lecture and if you have any query you may ask in the live class thank you